Look at your what? Your go shoe? Oh, come on up. We could, this is a costume contest. Let's show up. <laughs> Miss, what's your name? And this is Ella with a ghost shirt. Come on. Show up. Talking about the punting and the sweating and the sweating. Yeah. Oh yeah, the crowd. He's got the crowd noise, right? <laughs> Thank you, young man. Thank you. Thank you. Are we good? Oh, it looks not like I get to reintroduce this again. <laughs> okay, I would like to introduce. Okay, okay. So I presume everybody's glad about it. Anyways, I'd like to introduce everyone to the second annual Celestial Starburst costume contest. We must be doing better than last year because we have several more entries and a few cameos that I'd like to introduce. Um, our ju judging panel this year looks like we have three judges. So we have Michelle, and we have Gloria, and Bree Sheridan Rose. Thanks, ladies. And thank you for coming up with us. It takes a little bit of bravery to say, yay, on that one. I'm sorry, it's actually, I, I consider it kind of brave because I get kind of nervous when I sit behind that chair. Yeah, I can stand up here and make an idiot out of myself. Congratulations! <laughs> yeah, you're right, progress. Anyways, speaking of progress, uh, the first lady I would like to introduce to you is not actually part of our costume contest. We just have a brief cameo of set of Gondon. It says hot here, but I'm sure I've told it. Oh. I'm gonna stick with hot, because I'm serious, look at that. Aren't you gorgeous? All right, this is Fiona Bar. And so don't wait for the yet, lady. Okay. The Hope Lady of Setaganda mourns the Emperor in the traditional color white. She's inspired by the book Setaganda by Louis McCaster Bejeweled. She's, this is the winner of the FENCON costume test of 2009, best in show and best overall workmanship. Have an applaud right there. I just want to run off to the auction so she's going to poof right now. <laughs> Alright, and I think we have our first contestant. You're going to have to forgive me if I stumble over this one a little bit. I haven't had a chance to read over the whole thing yet. But this young man is Esquire of Rohan. Cody, come on in. Inspired by the Lord of the Rings movies, this young squire from Rohan is preparing for the march to Helm's Deep. His clothing is practical as with this mighty horse culture, and every detail mirrors the care of... <laughs> the care of expect, one expects to find in well-made tack. The vest is blanket stitched, much as his horse saddle blanket is, and is split in the back, spin around there, <laughs> to make his riding more comfortable. His tunic is made of fine split suede and is trimmed in his master's colors. His boots fit snugly in the stirrups, though he hopes his master will favor him with new boots once the danger is passed. With the, with the cloak offering an additional layer of warmth, this young squire will soon be departing with all of Adoras for the safety of Helm's Deep. And I must add, you know, when we're talking about warmth, considering this past week, well played. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we have Penelope, the urban mage, who patrols the deep Elm sector. She's wearing a dark purple hooded corset fingerless gloves, a bone amulet necklace, now I have to wonder who donated that, <laughs> and black converses, which probably explain why she's calling herself the urban mage. They're oh yeah, <laughs> that they are. Now, rumor has it that this busy mage freelances as a jazz singer, and she's going to be sharing a bit of her talents with us this evening. Now, would you like the microphone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to be evil. I wanna be mad, but more than that, I wanna be bad. <laughs> Next up, 
we have the gorgeous Diana Graves. She is wearing black and chain, inspired by the Lady Death and the Goddess Dawn. I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> She's modeling the work for Twisted Links, a fine and not to mention creative chainmail boutique. And by creative, I mean show off that little hair <coughs> man. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> We have Raven as the steampunk captain. She is wearing black, a black pirate coat, a red corset, and it said right here, it said black goth pants and boots, but I'm sorry, once we get to goth, I think the black is pretty expected. <laughs> she carries a gun made by the evil John Mays, thank you young lady, and check it, she comes out with her, comes with her own sound effects. <laughs> Next up, we have, okay, before I get shuffled in my own notes here, we have number five, I believe, who is our steampunk fairy Nimoy. Come and join us. She's wearing a black and red Victorian, uh, Victorian fairy corset with gloves, red glasses, and striped stockings. Now, the pendant is from Damsel in Distress. Oh, do show them that. And I just want to point out that somebody's been making this clockwork, su clockwork sweetheart cry because look at those oily tears down her face. <laughs> and I just want to draw a comment from one of our con contestants that somebody needs a hug. So who's yeah. volunteering? <laughs> 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 All right, for number six, we have the Barbarian Lord, who goes without a name, which is ominous enough. He's a dangerous individual, well suited to one of our previous... <laughs> to one of our previous contests, the Steampunk Captain, because he too comes with weapons. And comes with me, his, sound, his own soundtrack. <laughs> Let's hope this works. <laughs> 